Hey everyone, you got Marcel, I have returned again. So for today, I'm going to address something that's been repeated to me several times, and it's one of the main arguments that a lot of the psychiatrists or psychologists that happen to stumble across my channel will throw at me whenever they're trying to denounce MGTOW or to claim that it's bad or toxic for the human psyche, for the human mind. And that is their main argument being that humans are inherently social creatures, that they require interactions with other people in order to be fulfilled, in order to stay sane, and even to survive on the long term. And I hear these arguments to varying degrees from a lot of different sources, that basically people have to have other people Otherwise, they're going to just shrivel up emotionally and collapse in some kind of blob on the ground. It, they, okay, so maybe not to that extreme, but they make it sound like people have to have other people. And not from a societal stance, but rather from a interactivity. I'm going to try and explain my understanding of loneliness and the way that it affects the human mind differently between men and women, and why society in general is unwilling to acknowledge that there's a difference between the two. Many of you have already heard the concept that women need men, but men don't necessarily need women. I'm sure we have all heard that argument. Well, that's not what I'm discussing right now, but it goes along the same lines. You see, men do not perceive loneliness in the same way that women do. So let's establish a few things off the bat. I personally believe the whole field of psychology is very gynocentric. It's designed around women, with women in mind, and doesn't really take account of the way the two different minds can differ between the genders. With the exception that they absolutely love to throw out there that men are more violent. So on the one hand, they're trying to say that the two genders are equal and balanced. On the other hand, they're trying to say that men are much worse. Well, I mean, that doesn't really make sense, but that's not my point here. What I'm trying to bring attention to is that if the field of psychology is centered around the way the female mind works today, in this common era, it would make sense from their perspective that they would want to establish rules of what people in general need, regardless of gender, based upon what females would need. You see this a lot when it comes across talks about uh, masculinity or testosterone being bad things and higher estrogen levels in males being good things. TFM talks about this a lot. Society is rampant with it. The sort of dismissal of male behaviors in any positive context. Or at least the acknowledgement of things like aggressive behavior or dominance being natural to men and a healthy part of just the male mind. So bringing the discussion back on track, if you consider for a moment that if something were needed for women, they would also assume that it was needed for men based upon that sort of societal concept that, you know, men aren't important and only the women mindset matters. So where am I going with all of this? Uh, let's take kind of a random example here. Who likes reading books? Books are cool, right? I'm sure virtually everyone at some point in their life has sat down and just kind of gotten lost into a story and felt better from experiencing that. Almost being able to tune out the rest of the world. It, it can be a really nice thing sometimes, if you're into reading. Well, to be honest, other than textbooks, I haven't read an actual story for the joy of the book in a, a really long time. I haven't had the energy for it, the time to focus on it. I've been so distracted with work and all this other crap going on, I haven't had the ability to do it. So, if that sounds a little bit like you, you probably fall into the category of people that may enjoy a book occasionally, but don't require one to escape reality or to feel comfortable on the average day. Then consider those people that read three, four, five books a week, they can't put them down, they're constantly in, you know, have their face in a book. There's at least a fraction of those people that if they're not reading something or finding a way to get out of what they're having to deal with in their life, that they start to freak out. They kind of need that distraction on a daily basis. There are more examples other than books too. Consider shopping. I, I don't mind shopping when I have money to burn. Go out, look around a little bit, buy some cool stuff, come home. 99% of it's gonna be like projects that might eventually make me more money in return. It's just the way my mind works. I'm always trying to build better things. 
But have any of you noticed that there are some people in society that almost have a shopping addiction? Like it really has nothing to do with whatever it is they're buying and the function it'll bring to their life. It has more to do with the act of shopping in of itself. Going out and grabbing things and buying them almost makes you wonder if something else is going on, like there's either an addictive property behind shopping, or the shopping itself is filling a void, an experience that they're craving or they require to feel more comfortable. There are definitely some people out there who will shop almost to reassure themselves of their social standing, you know, that they have enough money to do that or to buy new things and collect things almost as a form of therapy. And for those types of people, and it really doesn't matter what it is that they're doing or why they're doing it, if it's filling a void in their life, an experience that they require to feel whole, to feel comfortable, if you were to take that away from them, they would become really uncomfortable. And although they would probably not collapse from not being able to buy that next purse, they would certainly find other outlets to replace that habit, that thing that was bringing them comfort. It's a requirement for some people. So how does this all relate to men versus women when it comes to social interactions and the concept of loneliness? Can we all agree that females are by far more social and they are and are magnitudes more emotional in their thought processes than men. You don't have to take my word for it, just listen to the way that women talk in general. Men will say what things are, or what they've experienced, or what something is. Women will say what they feel, and how a situation makes them feel. I'm sure a lot of us have heard the phrase, men think and women feel. So the reason why it is said so often that people need other people in order to survive, not from obviously from like a big society standpoint of not having any food or anything, but just from talking and interacting and socializing is simply because women do. They actually need that on a deeper level than men. Their personalities, their interactions, their emotions are all revolving around validation from their peers and their loved ones, from interacting from others. It's ingrained into their being in ways that men simply don't have that. It's just like often females have the ability to almost offload their emotions onto someone else, typically a man, and then he has the ability to burn off those emotions from her in like projects or keeping himself busy. He has to rely on himself because it's not very common for a guy to be able to turn around and do it right back. Having said that, men are typically much more capable of handling their emotions internally than women are. Though not always by choice, society is not kind to over-emotional men. Moving on, I believe that men need social interactions or companionship in the same way that a person might need a, a book or a trip walking around a mall. You know, it might be fun from time to time. It's enjoyable, it can take and relieve some stress if it's in the right context. But without those things, men are going to be just fine. They'll find plenty of other things to do that don't require another person interacting with them to accomplish. Women, however, need those interactions because a lot more of what defines them, of how they build their own social mental image of themselves, is created through those interactions, and without it, they lose a lot of their identity. I, for example, am Marcel. I'm still going to be Marcel, and I need no one else to validate me for that. It is simply my being, it's who I am. And although there are aspects of me, of my mindset, that I've picked up from my interactions with women, the requirement of being around people or around women is not one of them. I'm comfortable being alone, however you want to take that term, most likely because I'm comfortable with who I am. I'm comfortable with myself. I'm not defined by who I know. So as something of a summary, there are people that read books because they have a life they're not happy with and they need a way to escape it. Or there is at least a part of themselves that being able to read that book is filling and replacing something they're lacking. There are people that shop because they need to validate themselves through what they're able to get, what they're able to buy, and their accessories that they adorn themselves with is more representative to who they are than their actual person. 
And finally, there are people, notably women, who require things like social interactions, love, validation from their peers. Please note I use the term love very loosely in this context because it's ingrained into their identity or because there's a void within themselves that they're trying to fill, depending on how you want to look at it. And finally, the last and probably screaming answer as to why men are expected to need women, to need socialization, and to need other people in general, the less integrated a man is, the less involved he is, the less he plays into all of the games, the harder he is to control. These things that men are expected to require and to value, once they lose all of their worth in the eyes of the man, all of the people, specifically the women who are wielding those things, suddenly have lost all of their power. So in essence, there's definitely incentives to make it seem like men require a lot more than they actually do to be comfortable. So for all of those trying to say, oh, Marcel, you can't live alone. You can't be without a woman. You're gonna want one someday. You're gonna need that companionship. You're not a real man unless you've got a woman wrapped around you. To them, all I have to say is watch me. Because in the end, all the friends and purses and shoes in the world will never fill that void. None of it really matters when you feel validation through your own accomplishments. Which is something I think just a lot of people will never understand. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, let me know down below, do you agree? Disagree? Do you think I'm full of shit? I want to hear it, be brutally honest. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button, share, subscribe. And until next time, this has been Marcel.